Hi, it's me, Ingrid INFP, and uh, welcome to um, uh, Medical Literacy, Medical ABCs, uh, with, uh, with me. Um, I'm a, a registered uh, doctor. Uh, I have a license. I'm not a, a specialist yet, um, but I do uh, practice medicine, and I am telling you guys about the stuff that I um, hear a lot uh, for my patients and things that I say to my patients uh, day in and day out. Um, these are based on Swedish guidelines, but um, I'm sure that they can be useful elsewhere. Uh, I'm not going to go into specifics of like what the names of each medication is, um, because they're not the same in different countries. I'll try as much as possible to use the, um, the substance name rather than the um like uh, the brand name of a medication um and so let's get into it um so last time we talked about asthma and we talked about pain medication and this time i was thinking of uh, talking a little bit about psychiatric uh, medicine um and i'm going to first talk about um sleeping medication uh medication that you can take to sleep uh, first of all, like we try to avoid having a medication for sleep because the sleep is not as deep and is not as um, rejuvenating if uh, you take medication. Um, but sometimes uh, it's not enough to keep your um, like uh, sleeping hygiene routines uh, okay. Um, I mean, uh, uh, sometimes you can be in a quiet place, in a dark place, uh, have regular uh, sleeping routines, and still you can't sleep um, for different reasons. Some older people can't sleep because they, uh, they have problems uh, that they have to go to the bathroom at night. Some un younger people have that problem. Um, some people have anxiety, and uh, that means that they keep thinking about things. And some people have... Um, uh, just like go to sleep really late some people wake up several times a night and so nothing is going to be like the standard for everybody um, but the the nicest uh, medication uh, is a melatonin now this is very different from country to country in sweden only um, it, it's it costs a lot of money if uh, if you take it as an adult now, a lot of money for a Swedish person is not going to be a lot of money for an American person, for example. Um, but uh, it, it's, it's pretty expensive here, so a lot of people who have uh, problems sleeping don't really want to buy it. Also, the melatonin that is used in the US is stronger than what is used in Europe. Um, so a lot of people go to the US specifically to buy uh, this medication. I don't know, like what the dosages are in uh, the US. They have it in two milligrams and four milligrams, even three milligrams. Um, at the moment, there's a big shortage of medication throughout the world uh, because of COVID and uh, because of the global market. So a lot of these medications are going to disappear and we're going to be in a deep, deep trouble. But melatonin is uh, the nicest medicine because it's a hormone that we naturally uh, produce and uh, some people produce less of it so then they need a supplement of melatonin uh, which helps your circadian rhythm which is the rhythm of of sleep um, that's uh, like makes sure that you sleep you sleep at night and not during the day um, so uh, melatonin is also the best for people with uh, ADHD uh, because people with ADHD have their sleeping hours usually later um, and uh, need to go to bed earlier in order to fit in the societal norms so then they can uh, use melatonin. Uh, it's also good for children um, compared to these other medications that might not be uh, good for children. Uh, then we come into the um, uh, the antihistamine group. Um, they look like uh, allergy medicines. 
Um, that's the reason why allergy medicines make you tired is because it actually comes from uh, the antihistamine part of it makes you tired. And so um, there are other medications that use the side effect of the allergy medicines in order to help people sleep. And this is uh, good for people who uh, have anxiety and who need to kind of uh, get to sleep um, and calm down. Uh, a lot of these medications can be used um, to um, also um, calm people down for anxiety. Like it can be taken during the day, but it does make you tired. So uh, there are different types. There's uh, hydroxyzin, um, which uh, is atarax in Swedish. Um, there is uh, lagigon, which is... Uh, there are these different ones. Uh, the the common denominator is that it, it ends with the uh, zin at the end in the substance name uh, z i n e and uh, so promethazin uh, all of these uh, zin um alimemesin. um at the moment i have uh, uh propiomesin um and i have uh, uh alimemesin uh, myself um, uh, pro pure medicine is um, called Propavon. It's a good medication if you wake up at night um, because it's it works slower. So it doesn't. It's not really that great for making you fall asleep, but it's good for you to keep uh, staying asleep. So uh, I would recommend that to people who wake up early or who um, like wake up uh, during the night. Uh, it's not as potent as uh, other medications. Um, but the most important side effect of that is that you can get um, uh, like restless legs kind of problems where your your legs... Um, I, I haven't... Uh, side effects are, are different for, from person to person. But uh, you might experience uh, some uh, weird like um, stinging sensations in your legs um which um can happen but it usually doesn't happen um and so i i didn't experience that um but otherwise it's a very nice medicine in terms of side effects it doesn't have a lot of side effects um it also doesn't make you as tired as some of these other antihistamine um medications um uh, then we have uh, hydroxycin, which is very close to allergy medicines and can be used as a calming uh, medicine. Um, and then we have uh, alimemesin, which uh, is the strongest out of these, I would say, that is on the Swedish market. But there are other ones uh, that also exist on other markets. Um, so alimemesin, uh, basically when I take alimemesin, I just like conk out. <laughs> And then, like, I wake up the next day completely, like, well, but it does make me sleep. So, um, that is uh, often used in the psych ward, um, uh, for example, for people who have addictions, um, because it's these antihistamines are not addictive, um, and they can be combined with um, alcohol or other kinds of uh, um, medication. It's not recommended because it makes you even more tired if you take uh, alcohol and it's not recommended to drink alcohol if you have sleeping problems because in the end you make it worse uh, but like it's not toxic if you and you're you're not um it, it's not addictive so those are those that are not addictive um then there are sleeping medications that are addictive and what I mean by addictive is that uh, you will need it in order to sleep if you don't take it. If you take it too long, for too long of a period of time regularly, uh, without taking pauses, um, soon you will be having trouble sleeping without it. And you will might maybe need higher dosages to have the same effect as you had initially. 
so we don't want that so i try to keep it to maximum of two weeks regularly and then a maximum of a month with um down trapping well i i can't speak english um going down down in dosage um usually these medications i don't recommend taking every night i recommend trying at least to uh, keep it to only a few times a week um and using the other medications uh, uh for the other days of the week um because otherwise your body gets like your brain gets addicted to this um and then you can't sleep so there's sopiclone and uh, solpidem and they have different names uh but the z is basically that they've turned an antihistamine into like um they've twisted it to make it um even better basically for sleeping uh, but also even more potent and uh, addictive so uh, we want to avoid these um, pretty much. Uh, I see a lot of my patients be becoming addicted to them. And it's, uh, it's, it's sad to see because I see how they, it's, it really affects these people because they can't function without having these medications to sleep. And um, we have to be really restrictive as doctors uh, about this. Um, because it can lead to problems. And uh, finally, I'm going to talk about benzodiazepines. I do not recommend benzodiazepines uh, to people unless uh, it is really acute, like you're a person who has panic attacks all the time. Maybe they need, um, um, well, maybe they need uh, oxazepam. Um, I do not prescribe any other kind of medication because I work in primary care in terms of benzodiazepines. Uh, there are stronger benzos, uh, but this is extremely addictive and um, dangerous for your brain. Um, it kind of dulls your brain uh, if you take too much of it, and it's really difficult to get off of. And, um, well, it's, it, it's basically cl closest to, like, uh, harmful drugs that there is on, on the market for sleep medication. So I try to be really restrictive about this as a doctor. But yes, some people uh, need to have that because none of the other medication works or, um, or uh, there are side effects. Older people, for example, cannot take antihistamine uh, medicine. Uh, they can take uh, these uh, sopiclone and sulfidem, and they can take um, um, benzos, uh, but we have to be restricted on that. Um, basically, they cannot take uh, hydroxycin or um, uh, alimimacin or uh, propiumacin um, because uh, when you get old, um, you start developing all the side effects of those medications. So it's kind of sad because they can't take the stuff that usually is supposed to be the nicer medication. So that is um, all I had to say on that sleep medication. While I was at it, I took uh, the um, anti-anxiety medication. Um, you can For anti-anxiety, there are also people who take beta blockers. Um, for example, people with straight stage fright might take beta blockers, which are um, uh, and actually heart, uh, like our pulse, uh, goes down with this medication. Uh, so I like talk to your doctor uh, first, obviously, but uh, uh, that is um, a way to make your pulse calm down and um, like for when you know that there's a stressful situation coming and you uh, want to be calm during that. Um, obviously, make sure that you talk to your doctor because maybe you have a heart condition and you shouldn't be taking these. Um, 
but otherwise uh, that's it when it comes to anti-anxiety medication and when it comes to um, sleeping medication uh, i hope that you find these useful i'll be making a few more of these i think um, obviously take my advice with a grain of salt because it's not individualized to you uh, it's not individualized even to your country and uh, your doctor uh, should be the person who knows you best uh, but I do feel like um, this information should be known to the public and people shouldn't have to Google and sift through a bunch of like WebMD uh, pages that, um, that make everybody think that they have a brain tumor. Okay, so um, have a great day. Bye.